Take the theme down so they can hear my singing better. <laughs> 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 we can jam. I always jam. I jam in silence. I jam out loud. I jam with with some toast or you know some. Who I, you know who I jam. <laughs> okay, we're coming to the end of the theme. The Maracas players are getting their uh, their. They're unzipping their maracas covers and taking the instruments out. Get ready. Oh, here's that too. Here's my favorite part. Boom, 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 boom. Nice. I got it. All right. Thank you, uh, maracas players on Radio Science. Those, you know, what I love about them is that they play the exact same note at the exact same right. time. Every single time, they are they are the professionals are. of the professionals. I just I just love them. Hey, I think they drink mezcal. It's like that's what we all it. do. Yes, <laughs> no, I don't even mezcal. know what I don't, I don't even, even know, know what it is. No, what, what, what a mezcal it just sounded is. Sounded good. A, a mezcal so, sounds like it's halfway between a cow. It's yeah, like, it does. <laughs> It does. It's okay. Hey, um, you folks are uh, tuning into Radio Science News. This is episode number 828 in a series. If you uh, think that anything that ends in an 8 is a prime number, then you're just joking with me. Yeah. Uh, the uh, factors are 2 and 2, 3, 3, and 23. Well, you, you were it's so all, eloquent with It's that. all 2s and 3s. This is March 5th. 2022. You know, we also we should probably also give extra points for. And here's two things. All right. Symmetrical numbers. I like symmetrical numbers. Or symmetrical prime numbers should give <gasps> like even more points. Symmetrical prime numbers. <laughs> for Whoa. people out there, <laughs> the only reason I got, I I got chills. Goosebumps. <laughs> like, the only, my big problem this week, as my wife will tell you, is that I've been very frustrated with with the 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 fact that a lot of people do, apparently have no interest in math at all, you know. I and I know that I, I as a kid I I kind of like math because when I was a little bit good at it, mm-hmm. that was nice and they, they would, you know, you'd be rewarded for your interest and That's true. and all that stuff. But but at the same time it was hard and you know and all that. And I could see how people could kind of decide early. Yeah, so many people I know sadly decide I'm just not good at math. But it's so important that you do understand math because when it you're really looking is. at things like say you're arguing about oh like deep things like inflation or the yeah. causes of inflation or the price of gas things like that mm-hmm. it's really it's important well see see there are people that don't like math because they think it's hard and then there are people who don't like math because they know that it tells the truth well there is that and so I, what really bothers me is that when people say i hate math i'm always in the back of my mind going so are you just having trouble with math or yeah, yeah. or are you having the trouble <clears throat> with math that it tells the truth right. and that it's it's hard to make math lie? Well, see, I like math. No matter it, how hard you try. I, it, it, math helped, <laughs> it helped me to learn to jump rope as a child. So that's okay. why I liked it. Yeah. Okay. Well, good. Anyway, but listen, I, I just have I have a tiny little crazy math thing that's kind okay. of bothered crazy me. Crazy math Because, thing. you know, I, I as you know, I, I was doing some traveling and driving, and I noticed the price of gas. Oh, mm-hmm, wow, it's mm-hmm. two seventy three way yep. down in the south. And then, you know, in California, it was almost through four bucks and blah, blah, blah. And it, I see, I really understand a lot of those concepts like when right. they talk about, well, the price is basically supply and demand. I go, oh, right. okay, yeah, that's supply and I can demand. if if that's true, I, if, I can figure that. If that's true with a big I F, if that's <coughs> sure. true, then yes, I then I I, would, I should be able to go, okay, well, I'm going to look at the math numbers. I'm right. going to be able to feel comfortable so, because the so, truth will right. be that it's supply. So when and there's demand. a small demand. Wouldn't that mean that there's a smaller price? Well, that's that's true. But now, but okay. so let me just make right. this very specific. Okay. Because I, I I have a you and I are very much into looking, say maybe beyond petroleum and other like for yes. for like clean clean energies and green energies and electric energy, all sorts of things. But even if I if I take the perspective of of say I'm going to you know assume like that that basically there only is petroleum and stuff. Well, right. that's all there is. You know. Sure. Uh, I heard various reports, like I said, having seen the, the price, and I, I did see this number this morning. I'm going to say that they said that since the beginning of this issue in, in Ukraine. Issue, that's that an the, That, uh, you know, yes. uh, and I'm just talking about the in terms of, like, the gas prices. They're saying that because of that, like, it's gone up 37%. Okay. 
from that date. So let's just roughly call it 40 percent. Sure. Now, one of the things that's so crazy is everybody's arguing about whether or not in the case of you know, one of the things that's on the table, as Biden says, and most, in fact, it's interesting that, that it's there seems to be agreement between the Republicans and the Democrats that, you know, as, even if it's just a, a gesture, right. one of the things we should certainly not do is import any energy or any petroleum or stuff from Russia. From the people that are So the number the that problem. was tossed right. around was like, you know, well, it's how, what's the number? Six? Somebody said, well, it's six to nine percent, blah, blah, blah. And in, well, I saw four, but yeah. Well, no, let, well, so, let's go so the to, numbers to that are basically on the table right now are that, and I saw the chart. I couldn't find it in time to put it up on Radio Science News, but the the chart, the total chart of where you know, it's three percent. Okay, three okay. percent. It's three percent. Okay. All right, because so, I, I had heard four. All right. All right. So, so but but no, I don't want to get too deep in the weeds because here sure. here's my point. First of all. If the price of gas has gone up 40% right. in my little burg, in my little town in, right. in West Virginia, it's gone up 40% when it was already, it, you know, for some reason, Robert, you and I watched the fact that it never actually came back down after that so-called uh, pipeline was shut down and created I the shortage. Hear about that. Yeah, so supposedly there was a... <laughs> There was a shortage that will that eventually it, happen. That, that they immediately said. was applied. Right. 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 Okay. And so they immediately apply that. So, so, so I, I take it that what you're asking is that <laughs> if the price of gas was two seventy nine, right? <laughs> well, I actually saw it. I'm, I'm just saying around well, here. Let's just say it was roughly three dollars. Okay. Yeah. Well, let's call it three dollars, <clears throat> just so that we can all. Okay. So. Take out your calculators. You can use a real calculator or you can use your phone. I can count on my fingers. All right, so here we are. We've got $3 for a gallon. And let's say that we can't use 3% of that. Yeah, because you're going to say, okay. we, now, again, we're, this is very subtle. A lot of people are so, looking at the supply so, and demand. So, so that means that because there's 3% less oil yeah. to us if we drop out the Ru uh, russian oil you're saying yeah then that will increase by three percent well let's so gee three percent <laughs> times three dollars uh isn't that just three times three which is nine so shouldn't gas yeah, now like be maybe. nine cents a gallon more yeah. than well and, and if 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 we tell the perpetrators of this war oh, yeah, we just don't, don't get that complicated. we're not going to buy your oil well, let's, if let's not tell them. if let's we just did not that. do it oh, you know oh, 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 sure so <laughs> so then then you're saying that the price of of uh, of a ga a gallon of gas on the average should, should go up nine cents well okay, okay. And, and, and just to end this because we have so many good topics to cover okay That's i will also i will also point out that it hasn't happened yet but it's well, already well, 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 it's, it's already it's already been increased because people say it, it could might happen. happen. So it I'm going to raise happen. my prices right so, now. So wait 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 wait. So 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 being that before this all started, <clears throat> um, I bought ga gas a couple weeks ago at three, I think it was three sixty nine. Okay. Well, that's yeah, that's that's okay. up there already. Yeah, yeah that's wild. so. Wait, 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 wait. No, no, no. At two sixty nine. Oh, you saw that down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, and down then down south. I know. Right, and then um, just Three recently, down south. I saw the the gasoline near my house was like three. It's been seventy. Well, just it, you mean it's up there now, two seventy or three seventy? Three seventy. Yeah, that's a, it's it's like three the three seventy nine for so that's a, so that's a thirty seven and a half percent increase. Well, not, that's a lot. Not not a nine percent increase. So you're telling me that the math doesn't add up? I don't understand. <laughs> yes, you do. All right, let's let's move on because I, I mean so, I, so I, we could be doing math on this for the so, rest of the show. So so that's so that's over a four point two. That's that's approximately a four point two times increase. A four hundred and seventeen percent increase that's a lot over what it should be yeah well that, that's if you just well, if, you, if you go on the premise now well, the other thing i'm going to say is right. if if even though we were advocates for other forms of energy if we're basically saying the reality is we are in a market of petroleum sure, products sure, sure. i cannot for the life of me imagine that i'm just going to say not only just our local friends that are you know they're taking petroleum out of the ground but I know that you and I both have friends in Mexico and Canada who, who make lots of oil and gas and sure. stuff. If we were just going to forget about everything except the supply and demand concept, right. the idea that there's any problem 
with telling somebody, say like in 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 Moscow, that we don't want their three percent of gas because because right. it's going to mean we have a shortage. It's just absurd. So it's so absurd. wait wait wait. So 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 shouldn't we just go to our friends in the south and the north <laughs> yeah. and go, hey? Could you guys up north give us a one and a half percent more? Yeah. And hey, can you guys down in the south give well, us a little bit more? That's right. And can we even this out and everybody's happy? Well, listen, I, rather, than, rather than make that complicated, because you know me, I hate, I to, I hate to even ask. That I never, that is complicated. I never want to ask my friends for help. So, oh, me either. So here's my, here's my other point. <laughs> Having just driven across the great state of Texas, Home the of beta, huge state the of home Texas. of Beta O'Rourke. Yeah, uh, go Beta. <laughs> what I want to say is, I saw two things, and I mentioned it last week. First of all, there are active tons of more drills going. You know, yes. uh, they're, they're, they're drilling like more than they have been. And I even talked to people who are like, well, yeah, you know, every every hotel you was there is all full of people that are they're drilling more stuff because you know. So uh, I'm telling you, Texas certainly has plenty. The other part that I will point out is the other lesson to me driving across the state of Texas was Texas has more solar panels and more wind farms than any place in the United States. Right. And I literally saw thousands of windmills that were just feathered because Turned off. they had no transmission. They had no way to transmit that the power, power to out. other people. Because for some reason, and I'm going to say that that possibly was three percent right there. Just uh, uh, that could be the per- could be. that could be the missing three percent. I don't want to be talking through my hat, even though I'm wearing. Even though you have a splendid hat. <laughs> I have a splendid. All right, let's get to the let's get to radioscienceviews.org and, and uh, dive into the uh, exciting and sad topics. That yes. I'll put up. Okay. Hey. Uh, if, if, if you're just tuning in, this is Radio Science News, uh, episode number 828 in a series, March 5th, 2022. Uh, I'm going to go to my favorite webpage on the internet, which is www.smartcenter.org. And when you get there, and you, you can be along with me, uh, if you're driving your car, please put it on uh, autopilot. Uh, if you're you're uh, doing this, uh, if you're not, if your car doesn't have an autopilot, I please, say pull over to the side of the road, over. save some please gas. Please do a not cause a, <coughs> a, 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 a radio science news induced wreck. Uh, so when you're on smartcenter.org, lots of neat things going on there. And oh, you will be seeing soon, uh, we'll be putting up our summer science camps and teacher workshops here coming up. But you'll see a little trifecta rainbow uh, essence down there that says Radio Science News and Triplicate. Just above that in, in script and above that in normal print is the link Radio Science News that takes us directly to the launch, launch out. pad of science. Right. Thank you so much. I just want to say Richard puts this up every single week for our sciencing convenience and you know i know that there is a roar and cheer (laughs) internationally going up as i say this and i just want to say thank you i really appreciate it well and i'm going to say this always good stuff well and and this week because i'm looking again the fact that i have way too many topics i I was even thinking about this people are saying well you know you shouldn't have taken so much time just talking about the price of gas at the beginning because even though that's a math problem i just don't want to hear it (laughs) Uh, what i want to say i want to say that we often tell you that uh, radio science news has all of these links and all these stories any one of which we probably could spend Spend the the whole whole show hour on yeah Uh, and it's really important that if you are listening to radio size news, like on, on Wheeling Public Radio or on the, the NPR station up there in Connecticut, uh, you may actually want to rethink how you do radio science news. Think of it as a place where where you can go back and look at all of the links mm-hmm. that so, are there and either look at them there are in loads. more depth than we were able to cover. Or, you know, some of these, we don't, we, it seems like we almost never get to them because right. there are so many things to talk about. So uh, having said that... Uh, <clears throat> I, I just think we need to jump right in on a bunch of things. Okay. Let's it, when, do it. And when I say, for example, that one topic could take up a whole show, first of all, uh, I, I'm just amazed that if you're if you're a Scrabble player, what you want to do is memorize how to spell Zaporizhia. Oh, I know. I <clears throat> was I was lo- looking at that and going, gee, if I spell. If I could spell, if you could spell, and yeah. I could play Scrabble, I, I would spell, love yeah. to have that word. <laughs> well, my fascination was that I, 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 you know, looking at the uh, Ukrainian language, you see that every every city seems to be something Viv. So yes. it's uh-huh. kind of like uh, the name of the place where you could live, like Kiev, Ky- or right. you know. And then I'm looking at this one, and I, I was thinking, so 
Zaporizhia, it's got this double like Z kind of thing in it. It, it almost reminded me of like a, a Hawaiian fish that you could catch and eat, the huma huma, nuka nuka, you know. Anyway, so uh, I'm just going to this because there's, there's so much to this story. Uh, and again, I don't want to cover too much, but I wanted to pick out a few little details because they All actually right. are going to relate to something we're going to talk about. Everybody has probably seen this. You can see the, the video of a nuclear plant uh, at what, that appears to be on fire after being fired at with, you know, artillery shells. I still can't, <clears throat> can't so believe much. that anyone well, and I mean, there's so much to talk about. It would says ever do such a thing. None I of the just... safety systems were affected, and there was no release of radioactive material, but still risky. Uh, this story continues to get worse because basically, you know, the, the reason why it's, you know, not terribly bad right now is because all of the staff that are still there working, working under gunpoint, uh, this is a really large, and it's, it's huge. And uh, a lot of people got excited and worried about the a Chernobyl. It has, rela- it has six reactors. Yeah, now these I are... I mean, it's a... It's, it's a big facility. Yeah. Now, the, the good thing is that it's much more modern than Chernobyl, yeah. which was a which was an old Soviet era thing, which was still super dangerous. Yeah. Uh, and I, 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 not that it's going to make any difference to some of the folks that are perpetrating various things, but uh, you know, if something does happen here, it's not going to drift back into Europe. It's going to drift right into your everybody's. Well, and it's going to drift across Russia for like right. ten time zones or whatever sure. it is. Uh, <clears throat> there's just so much here. But I, I, as Robert pointed out, you can see them one, two, three, four, five, six. Uh-huh. Now, one of the things that I did see, and it may be in this story, and, and if you read through it or you see it elsewhere, they basically have shut down. There's only one operating now. Okay, all right. So that they've shut, but that was because of like you know shutting down automatic features and. It says the Ukrainians are in the process of taking the reactors offline to protect them. So that's that that was actually happening. The 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 the, the, the technicians and scientists from the Ukraine who were operating the plant were actually in the process of taking them down because they knew that this could be really bad. It says only one of the six reactors operational at the power plant is now thought to be running because they you know. But now of course this is going to be. Uh, uh, you know, we, uh, the, the fact that somebody can eliminate all of your, that's like the largest power plant in Europe, let yeah, alone Ukraine. Uh, and if you scroll down, there's a nice little picture of how, where the Map. rest of the yeah. rest of them are. Uh, and I think there was, any, oh, the, the, the thing I was going to mention to you, Robert, is a math thing. Because, like, I, you know, I think I've sadly already pointed out that you're, like, very much into math. You I know, really like when math. We were talking about it's that fun. little gas thing, you know, the uh, <clears throat> each of these little six, when you're looking at that photo, the six uh, separate reactors, Yes. these are, uh, I believe, light water reactors, so okay. they're more modern and they're yeah, a little good. safer, but not not, but not completely, completely safe. safe. Yes. You know, like because they even if still you still sh- need to be cool. Yeah, if you shut them down and they get, and there's no other electricity to do it, there's a chance that you won't be able to cool them. But see, each, each one of those is a 950 megawatt unit. 950 you can megawatt. Write that unit. I, I, I'm going to write that down. Uh, so it's <clears throat> six 950 megawatt yeah, units. Yeah, so I just thought that was important. Okay, uh, you know, folks, let's, this is, <laughs> there's so much you could say oh. about this, and, and there's so many arguments you could make about being held captive to a central source of power True. or that you have a source of power that i mean the big danger is it it's it has all of its spent uh rods and things on site, on site. in cooling oh, yeah pools that, that, and that things. is also very scary uh, i don't know what if you stole all that stuff and decided you're gonna do nasty things with it but uh anyway oh. I, we're we're gonna sure probably focus happen. just because I you know in some ways you know obviously Robert knows this I'm kind of obsessed with the whole energy thing and how you know I think I said maybe 20 or 30 years ago when again I'm gonna I'm gonna inv- invoke the, the name of our, our good friend Howard Monroe we were I, I pointed out to him at some point you know I said you know all these things that are going on in the world that are you know struggles or wars they're all based it, it's like all based on energy energy it's like the uh, fact energy, that I've energy, got energy, energy and you can't have it or right. I'm gonna or, I'm going to jack up the price you, of energy, and or or you <clears throat> you have it, and I am going to take it. <laughs> there, well, there there's so many yeah, there's so many uh, co- perturbations of that concept. Yeah. So we're going to talk about a whole bunch of things. One of them is, gosh, it's one of them that we've actually been talking about for a Hydro- long time. The um, hydrogen. Yeah, hub. it's a new thing. A uh, story about the hydrogen hub, and of course, this is from our local uh, newspaper, the Intelligencer. Is it going to tell me that maybe I can't? No, it says something. Do am I going to have to subscribe to read it? It's offering me the chance. That's nice. It will, isn't that? Because sweet. I I like that 
freedom to have to be able to or not. I know? have four articles oh, remaining. I only get to get to only read two, and I can start paying for them to read them. Well, okay. okay. So, <coughs> Carlson, economic development officials and congressional leaders believe that West Virginia could be a prime candidate for a massive project to demonstrate the use of hydrogen in manufacturing. So where are they going to get this hydrogen? Because it's well, in water, it's in methane, it's in coal. Well, I think there's that, a lot of different places that you can subtract yeah. that hydrogen out. Well, and the thing is, it says the West Virginia Hydrogen Hub Working Group held its first organizational meeting Friday. Governor Jim Justice and three members of the state's congressional delegation. And when it says three, because they're the only ones who voted. Oh, it says the three members of the Congre of the delegation who voted in favor of the 1.2 trillion infrastructure investment and jobs act okay so if so you're let's not at least give these guys then you credit. shouldn't be on the team right <laughs> well that's okay, i would gotcha. like to see. That, 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 uh, that, uh, that makes sense to, at least they, to me. they say a lot of uh, uh, basically nice things we're a strong working group i think we just understand energy that's what capita uh, shirley Moore capita says now, i'm going to say phrase. that you guys may or may not understand energy you understand you know Fossil fuels and, right. and, and, and no, I'm yeah. just, let's just say they, they sure. understand energy, uh, and I'm not sure, you know that that could mean a lot of different things here. So anyway, they're, it says they're going to develop a plan to submit to the Department of Energy to bring one of the at least four hydrogen hub projects to West Virginia. And here's here's the a, a very cogent point. I I'm I'm like to stick to this. Each hub is required to demonstrate the production of clean hydrogen, and demonstrate the use of clean hydrogen. So they <laughs> have to be able to understand it well, and yeah. and show that they can use it yeah and then some it's funny down so, here somebody has a paragraph time to hydrate uh you know and the thing is the act is absolutely clear that it's about clean hydrogen being right. the, the the key to cleaning up america manufacturing so, so so it says the federal project is funded with 9.5 billion from the hard infrastructure bill the program is split into three projects eight billion for the regional Hydrogen hub program, one billion for the clean hydrogen electrolysis program. Yeah, we talked about that and briefly. And five hundred million for the clean hydrogen manufacturing and recycling program. So, so all good. Now, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to. There, there's a lot to, to look at in this article, but I'm going to scroll down to. This is where you and I were going. Hey, okay, wait a minute. There's pink and there's green. What the blue hydrogen? No. Uh, there's a little summary down at the bottom, a little further, where it says hydrogen can be extracted, can be extracted from existing fossil fossil fuels such as natural gas. That's called gray hydrogen. Yeah. Oh, gray hydrogen. <clears throat> it, it, but it's still, okay, and then it says blue hydrogen process is where they take it from all these fossil, but then they sequester it. So we've got gray, now we've got blue. It's like okay. a civil war going on right here. <clears throat> Water <laughs> electrolysis would be green hydrogen. I would say that would be blue, <clears throat> but oh, okay, green. Or, That's okay, green okay, hydrogen. Right, green hydrogen. Okay, and then it points out that while hydrogen is promising, it's also very expensive, such as, uh, it says, uh, that according to the IEA, fuel costs such as natural gas make up between 45 to 75 percent of the gray, gray hydrogen production. So you're actually going to use 70, you know, oh, according oh. to that. That's the gray hydrogen. Okay, that's great. Uh, so anyway, uh, there's a lot to look at. It. We would like you to look at that. Uh, All right. There are ways to do this that could be, and, and I'm going to say that the basic concept, they, they scroll down and they talk They talk about weaponizing of energy. This, this has a lot of really... You know, Joe Manchin and the Shelley Moore, they're talking about how Putin is using natural gas. This is, you know, a quote from Manchin. Putin has weaponized energy. He's using his natural gas and he's using his coal reserves and oil as a weapon to punish people who do not submit to what he wants. Now, implicit in that statement is, is my whole point. If you weren't, if people were not, countries were not uh, dependent on coal, that oil and all this stuff, then it couldn't be used as a weapon against right. you. So, first of all, that's because, something that you should take Because from if your country is powered by wind and solar and, and <clears throat> Maybe wave something else, and yeah. wa water, nobody's going to be able to take away your sunlight. Right. Nobody's going to be able to take away your wind, they know sunshine, your waves. Wind, she's gone. Yeah. Right. So, <sighs> so okay. I'm just saying, implicit in his very statement is a great argument for right. moving to other things. All right. I... <laughs> I'm just going to say this, and you can write this down and see if I'm right. In five years, uh, this will go absolutely nowhere. The money will all be spent. It will do nothing. Well, we should, we're going to try to have it do something. But, but see, what yeah. I'm saying is that unless they do it correctly, yeah. and correctly means you have to find a use for this first. Okay, We already have fuels in place, and we're already using them in yeah. place. 
So we're going to have to convert stuff. People don't like to convert stuff. So we're going to need to, there's, there's, there's a whole bunch of other stuff that needs to happen to make this even start to think it's going to work. And I don't think that we're going to do this. I think we're going to accept the money. I think we're going to flounder around with it. I think we're going to spend it. And then I think that the next group is going to come in and say, well, that didn't work. Well, that's I mean, what now, I think is going to I, I'm right just going to say, I'm, I'm going to try to you know, remain I'm that they're so, positive. I'm oh, sorry that I sound so <laughs> you sound negative here. a little here. cynical today. Yes, I'm very but, cynical because I've seen this kind of thing before. Well, and, and I, 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 I will not argue against that because... Uh, you know, you and I could spend another few minutes talking about the uh, the coal to diesel fuel plant in we 1970 would. that would have uh, solved this problem. Solved everything, yeah. But, but uh, that yeah. didn't happen, did it? No. That happened here. That because because there are people in place, the inertia that's already in place well, is not going to let there's this power happen. In place right. too, yeah. Yes. Now, w- what I will say is that I'm sure that part that part of the the reason for considering West Virginia as a hub, first of all. We sort of are in the middle of all kinds of pipelines and different yep. stuff like that because uh, we are in a region where extractive fossil fuel uh, industries right. they they have a lot of control. We are <laughs> we are we are also in a region where because we have so much extractive coal, oil, gas-based fuels yeah. that because of that. You don't have to convince us that it's okay. We've already we've already suffered. We've, we've already paid all, the cost. We've right? all we've already bought into it. Well, sort of, yeah. Okay, so you don't have to go to a nice place that doesn't have this and say, "Hey, we would like to do this to you." Yeah. It's already being done to us. We would like to remove your mountaintop, right? Yeah, now, so. exactly. Yeah. Well, anyway, but my my point is, I think that the basic thrust for this is going to be the argument that we have coal, yeah. we have natural gas. Let's turn it into hydrogen, and that's why we should be here. But and I'm just only, saying that's the only way right. that's going to work is that they're going to have to do a ma- a magna gas thing to it. Well, that's the only that's the only way it's going to work. If not, then this is a complete waste of time. You are right that because of the the process that they're talking about. As they said, we're talking about using seventy. It's like saying, you know, well, I can uh, I can process my oil into gasoline, but I'm going to have to burn seventy five percent of my oil to make that work. <laughs> That's, You're you know, like, what kind of ridiculous... Uh, yeah, don't be talking that's math to me. bad math. Now, these next... I have two more links coming up. Now, I have floating okay. solar floating and then solar, solar float. And you're going solar to say, float. well, actually, I, I was going to do solar... <laughs> I was going to do, a, you know, a Dr. Zeus, a solar one a thing two or something, but uh, what, one fish, two fish, one fish, fish. Let's take a quick look at floating solar. All now, right. Now, and, and I don't want to spend too much time on this because this is uh, basically we're going to lay this idea out there, and. And I'm going to say, you know what? For places where this makes sense, that's it's first a great idea. Can solar farms thrive on water? Actually, there's some really good reasons. Flo- I like, that, like the term flotovoltaics. Yeah, flotovoltaics. Yes. Well, and now the, the only thing, the, my first initial thing was, okay, as if you have, if you're a farmer or anybody, mm-hmm. or if you're a fisherman, whatever you are, you understand. That there's some things that you can do walking around on solid ground easier than if you have to thrash around <laughs> in the water to do it. <laughs> That's true. Right? I'm just saying. That's true. Now, so my, my initial response was uh, having traveled, I, I'm just going to say it again, I, I, let's, I don't want to pick on Texas because I'm actually advocating for Texas as being a, a fabulous example of how you could use your resources. Right. There are miles, in, I think there's a country song, Miles, miles and, miles and Miles in Texas. Yep. There's, my, there's a song. Uh, the point of it is, there are lots of just amazing places where, and I'm, I'm saying they're already next to infrastructure, like right along major highways, right along major rail systems, where you could just lay, you could lay them flat. You don't even have to angle them. You could Wait. just like pull them up, dump them off a truck, <laughs> plug them in. <laughs> dump them off a truck. <laughs> and, and you have you have solar farms that are just, I mean, it's unbelievable. Wait. That's, you know, that doesn't even go to the fact that they have amazing wind power too. Right. But. So the idea of floating them, at first I was thinking, ah, you know, I don't know, that's so good. You know, but why do you want to for, do that? You're going to ruin my for, fishing. But for a place. For certain places. Yeah. If you've got a lake, if you've got a re, a, re, a reservoir, yeah. and it's surrounded by homes, and you're going, gee, we'd like to put some solar power in here. Yeah, you could do But that. where are we going to put it? We're yeah. not going to bulldoze these homes. Um, <laughs> well, and the other the other thing I'm going to say is there there are whether it was in this article. So this article looks really good. I'm going to go back and I'm going to jump to the next one, Solar okay. Float, because this is another similar article. Uh, 
you know, talking about what is the potential. Now, this is this one actually had a really interesting concept. First of all, you're looking at some pretty big lakes here. Like, look yeah. at this. It's not like these things will Those take up all your, yeah. you know, like it's going to ruin your water skiing. You know, Robert right. and I, there's nothing Robert and I like better than get out on the Ohio River. Oh. <laughs> get, get up on those uh, water skis. Yep. And go skis. Go skis. So, so, it says, so it says here, solar power is the world's cheapest source of electricity isn't that according a, now to, see that's something to stop and realize now too when yeah talk so about it's all cheaper these. than oil it's cheaper than gas it's cheaper, cheaper than, than coal, coal it's yeah. cheaper than geothermal it's cheaper than that's what they're saying yeah. uh well that, that's according that is that according is, to a yeah. 2020 iea report it's land intensive though so researchers have explored the potential of floating solar panels on bodies of water their study suggests that the idea has potential but questions remain about the impact right. on wildlife and the broader ecosystem. So yeah. these are important things that you uh, have to think about. And, and I'm going to say once again, there's this is a large... What's what's fascinating yeah. about this is that as, uh, as I read down here, it says, yeah. um, it says that, uh, uh, <clears throat> it says that a solar... Wait, wait, Recent studies have shown that the technology generates more electricity compared with rooftop or mountain or ground mounted solar panels. This is thanks to, thanks to the cooling effects of the water beneath there the panels, go. which can boost how effective these systems generate electricity See, there's one, by as much as 12.5%. That's one eighth. Yeah, and we've heard that directly from some right. people that run so solar that panels cool? and have, have pointed out that in the winter time, on a bright day in the winter, the, the temperature state. It now, says here, sol floating solar panels on 1% of reservoirs could double Africa's hydropower capacity. That's just one percent. Okay. Yeah. On one yeah, percent of the re a re a re a reservoirs in in Africa. So it it looks as though that if you put solar panels on one percent of the lake that a reservoir is at, yeah. it it doubles the power coming out of that lake. That's yeah. just amazing. Well, the other thing, the other thing that, uh, see, my initially I was thinking that the the concept of needing to put on a lake was didn't make much sense. Now the they they point out several things uh, that uh, the the situation where uh, water uh, even in our neighborhood, I'm thinking of Lake Erie, I'm thinking of the Ohio River, uh, has to deal with toxic algal blooms. Mm -hmm. So one of the things that that actually happens is when you're shading some of this, you actually can. Can put can, that water below the you, temperature source. You the temperature can point. you can control how cold the water is. Right. So it says uh, lakes and reservoirs are are already important for people and the planet. While these freshwater bodies cover less than one percent of the Earth's surface, they nurture almost six percent of the biodiversity and provide drinking water and crop irrigation, irrigation that is vital to billions of people. And it also cools off those lakes, which keeps the algal blooms down. Well, and here, so, and then it's something they didn't even mention in this. Fascinating. This is one of those articles that makes you go, "Oh yeah, it was." Would there be anything else? The other, the other obvious thing is, if you have, uh, if you're looking at uh, whether it was an actual like desalination right. situation, yes. or just a thing where you're going to take. Uh, the, the water that's in a lake, and you and you know, I'm, I'm thinking you you've been a uh, you've been in Africa. You've yes, seen, I have. You've seen little villages where they're trying to survive and thrive. And you know, one of the biggest things is if you had a source of uh, you know, so that extra heat that might have be derived when the sun hits these things could then be actually used to produce more clean drinking Wouldn't water. Wouldn't that be awesome? I I, I also well, want want to say that because you're making the lake cooler. It evaporates less, yeah. and therefore more water stays in your lake. Yeah, so it's a, it's it's one of those things where initially, at first I was thinking, well, you know, we've talked about various schemes where they have like floating ag, you know, agriculture right. too. There are all kinds of things like that that, you know, it it would depend on the situation and certainly makes sense. But I'm going to have to say this is an idea worth looking at. Yes. Now, yeah. it's it's uh, it's an idea that 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 appears to be good in the places that it can be yeah. applied to. And a lot of people have already done it. They mentioned there's a whole article about uh, uh, having done it in Japan. And, yeah. and you know, and I, I wouldn't even have to say to you, Robert, hey, Robert, did you know what the, that the cost of land in Japan is really high? You wouldn't be surprised, <laughs> It's would exceedingly you? high, yes. Well, and, they, and the other thing that obviously they didn't mention specifically, but do you know a lot of places have lakes, a lot of places have oceanfront. I was about to say, could you put this in a... In a large protected bay, well, 
go. Or wow. I was mostly thinking of Gilligan's Island because I, I remember I they, always had, think they, of all, they had a scientist on there that could have figured this out with, with the help of Gilligan, I'm sure. You mean the professor. <laughs> the professor. <laughs> right in all right. Okay. Now, one of the things I have seen multiple times, in fact, I sent you an article about this because, and I also sent it, I copied I sent you and, and Andre Rossi the same article. And oh, you yes. You saw that, right? Yes, yes, I so did. So I'm going I over here where it says, heat pumpify. Heat I'm here to heat. I'm here to pumpify everybody. <laughs> pumpify that fool. Okay, so this was one of, this is one of the, uh, this, this is a really good guy. This this guy, William McKibben, Bill McKibben, who has, he's been really working hard on all kinds of environmental cool things, right? So what he has done, he, he's kind of done... Oh, I, I say I'm excited about this and frustrated in, in at the same time because it's he points out like the the absolute logic of say using a technology just to make things work better. Now, first of all, that doesn't mean everybody's going to use it, or you know you're going to have to deploy it. But it's it's a whole thing based on the fact that one of the things that has improved are heat pumps. And so this guy's kind of, I don't want to say it's, it's not that he's just focused on one note or like a one note thing or something, but uh, it, basically he says new technology, affordable and workable means Europeans can heat their homes with electricity instead of gas. And of course, right there you're going, oh, wait a minute, we still oh, have to get that Oh, wait a minute, that's interesting. If we wanted, we could before the next, he want, what he's looking at, and I think if you scroll down, you'll see, you see this whole thing where they're, it looks like they're making B-24s. That's what it looks like. And see, I was just there looking at, I was down at wow, uh, the place in Texas picture. where the B-24s were all, my dad actually was a B-424 mechanic, a B-24 mechanic during World War II in I China. I know that. But that's, that's another awesome. whole story, the Flying Fortress. Anyway, his point is we could mobilize and we could manufacture heat pumps, Robert. Heat pumps for everybody. A chicken in every pot and a heat pump a in every heat garage. A pump in every garage. I like that. Okay, basically. Sign me up. The point is he's actually making, uh, you know, uh, he goes down and gives you a whole sense of how the wartime effort to, you know, to create the, all the, you know, the things that supposedly helped us win World War II and set up right. the peace that we've had for sort of a while, but for, yeah, now up seems until to be now. disappearing. Uh, I mean, it's a whole big article. It, it, it's absolutely based on the... <laughs> It's based on the, the whole concept that energy and um, warfare sometimes go hand in hand, yes, right? Yes, they do. Anyway, so the only thing about this, first of all, he's talking about the, we're going to manufacture these heat pumps and give people okay. electricity, and then they can run their heat pumps. I mean, you know, they're going to have to run their heat pumps on electricity. Right. And my point is I just... Gee, if, I, gee, I, if there were only some easily transportable yeah, light... Else effective way to non -radioactive. generate non-radioactive yes non-radioactive non-carbon based yeah, fuel well, cell kind of a there you go. generator so if, to if run there were, your heat pump off he, he makes the argument that there has been changes in technology that mean you could do wonderful things but then he still says but you're gonna have to run them on electricity okay well, okay you know, so i go well so, so has has he heard and, I, and we're going to go out on a limb and i, I once again meant robert we're going to mention the ecat Again? Again, we're going to Boy, mention we, the ECAT. We, we, because we've been, doing, do a little, a lot, we've been we? doing a little math on it. And I just put that up because as of March 3rd, so you might not have seen this, uh, one of the things it says in the exchange on the Journal of Nuclear Physics today, Rossi indicated that all he's not going to begin dis distribution of the ECAT that, you know, produce, it's a long story, we're going to get it. They basically, he has said, they, they were going to wait until they had a million orders right. before they would do it. But then... He basically says they're so sure that they're going to get to the million, that they've now started production as of March 3rd. Oh, March 3rd, awesome. 2022. Uh, and somebody, and it's because somebody said here, my order was for five of these and I've ordered another five. He said, uh, the, you know, in my opinion, the risk, but we, the chance is enormous. We look around at our world today and it gives us many reasons to do it in this way it costs only some dollars let's do it you know in right. other words let's start getting this technology out there and and, I'm, and of course obviously rossi says i empathize with you you know and the point that we're looking at is once again the, this is a germ this is a fellow in germany who is again probably feeling partly held hostage to the fact that for some reason they want to still get their oil, their oil and gas from right another source okay so <laughs> <laughs> That's an interesting way, but another source. So anyway, you and I, if, if folks have listened to this, they're going, you guys keep talking about this ECAT technology, when it's going to come and what it's going to do. Uh, one of the things that 
that Robert and I talked about was the fact that if you were to go, uh, let's see, if you look back to our, where's the one that said Big E Cat? It's back. Let's see. Oh, uh, um, like about a month, three uh, weeks. If you go to, uh, if you go to January the fifteenth, it's way back there. Yeah, oh, wow. January fifteenth. There's a big e cat. <clears throat> so I'm going to click. I'm going to. If you're okay. again, I've told folks it's important if you're kind of on listening to Radio Science News and if you have your computer open, you need to okay. go and look at these links because it's kind so, of like a weird interactive. So thing go to we January fifteenth, two thousand twenty-three. About. Uh, 2022, about two thirds of the way I'm gonna just from click, the left. I'm going to click on it and read it to you, yeah. so, so oh, you don't even over. have to do that. Okay. But, it, but right. there's more. This is when Rossi announced, basically a month ago, that uh, that they're actually going to take orders for one megawatt power plants. See, that just blows my mind. Oh, so wait, 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 wait. <laughs> so, so wait, so wait, so so a one megawatt power plant, and there's. Six nine hundred and fifty megawatt units. Okay, so we'll talk about Ukrainian. Now I know. Hmm. So once I got you, warmed I know up, you. I, you got your math machine. Warmed I up have in your my brain. calculator warmed up. I told you last week about how there actually are separate neurons for for you know math for doing uh, addition and subtraction. Well, that's good because I don't have a lot. Well, you, so so I'm just going to give you some of the facts from this thing. Now, for one thing. Uh, it says they're gonna they can deliver a one megawatt plant in a what they call a a half standard size shipping container. That's okay. a twenty foot shipping container. All right. I think they're maybe eight feet or ten feet wide, whatever they are. Okay. Or Robert, if you're if you're like feeling if you I know we have a bunch of investment money from the uh, from the aquarium gravel mine. Oh, you I and love I the aquarium operate gravel. Operate out there in yeah. Marshall County. Okay, a two megawatt plant will be delivered on a standard shipping container. Okay. So think about so, standard shipping all container. Right, so I am doing the math. Standard shipping container. If if the if the Ukrainian giant nuclear power plant has six nine hundred and fifty megawatt units, that's well, before you do that, let's okay. I, let's so you have those facts yes, in your head. Yes, I do. I do indeed. Let's let's. I, I'm going to say just based on that, we've got a megawatt power plant, right? right? It'll fit on a ten foot on a ten container, foot, right? Or you can they'll they're, they'll send a two megawatt plant, right. all wired and ready to go. Turn it on, generate electricity, on a standard twenty foot shipping container. Okay. Okay. You got that. Now yep. here's the big deal. You say how much does it cost? How much Each does it cost? Each megawatt at the price now, even though I'm sure it could be cheaper as things go on, is two point five million dollars. Right. Oh my God, Robert, that's a lot of money. So 2.5 million per megawatt. You've got okay. that all plugged yep. into your system. Okay. Now, I'm not even going to talk about Ukraine and their power plant. Right. But I am going to talk. I'm going to. The next thing I have is a, a quick thing about coal-fired power plants. Okay. And if you go to the one, if that, I could for just a sure. moment. Sure. Oh yeah, yeah. If okay. you were to replace that Ukrainian power plant. Okay. Yeah. Okay. With an ECAT device, and that ECAT device will be good for 11 years. Right. Yeah. yeah. Eleven point four. Le- Eleven. At least that's point, what they say. Point four years. No radiation. Don't have to worry about cooling towers. The whole bit. It'll cost you fourteen point two five billion dollars. Wow. Turnkey for the largest. Turnkey for the lar- That's the largest the, nuclear power to, plant in Europe. To replace the largest <coughs> nuclear power plant in Europe, and have it run clean, no nuclear waste, no nuclear problems. Zero emissions will cost you fourteen point two five billion dollars right. to run for eleven years. Ele- well, see, eleven point four years. See, see, that makes me inhale and take in a deep breath anyway. But let me, since you are in, what, what do you think it costs <laughs> to build one of these things? Oh, we're going to get to that. We're and get... then afterwards, what does it cost to decommission one of these things? Oh, don't even think it's about. hundreds and hundreds of billions of dollars. Well, okay, but while you're okay. still in Ukraine, I am in Ukraine. Could you tell me uh, now the footprint of uh, of my two megawatt plant or, 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 or right. one megawatt is basically ten by ten? I think. It's ten by ten for okay. uh, each one. So you've got ten by ten. So you've got okay. So you've got uh, six times nine fifty times one hundred square feet. Yeah, you could round that up, 950, okay. so that's okay. like 6,000. I am right? just going to say this literally fit, fits on an acre and a half of land. Wow. Okay? Yeah. Oh, and you could probably stack them if you wanted to. Well, so yeah. if they were flat on the ground, 
and an acre of land is 43,650 square feet or something like that. Yeah. Which means on less than an acre and a half of land, you could put this power plant, it would cost you $14.25 billion and you're done for 11 years. And you're done. And then you're done. And the thing Just is, hook you, up some wires and you're And the thing is, you don't have to have a centralized thing. You could put these oh, out know, wherever you out. need them. Yeah. Like you maybe one single shipping cart every 10 miles. 10 miles. And you could or every take, village. Or, or every, every village. Or uh, every downtown. Or uh, every, every other hospital. downtown. Yeah, whatever you need. You could move these where wherever you need them. And so, so it's not like it's going to go down you'd have to take them all down yeah and if in fact if, even if you blew them up wow. there wouldn't be any materials there, there wouldn't be, be any i mean it would just no be dangerous it, materials. Uh, it would just be junk yeah it'd be just like uh, sheet metal or something right. all right now since you have that kind of concept in your head i'm going to wow. jump to i couldn't find uh, you know I, I actually was looking for some better uh source stuff but i, I you know i was saying to you because we're talking about we're talking about even as we talk about the hydrogen hub, right? Right. One of the things you and I have said, well, how how does some of this fit into where we live? So, I'm thinking, people would say, well, what about if we were going to replace a coal plant? Okay. So my first thing was I found if you click on that now, mine opened coal up. Plant. Does yours open up as a PDF or does your not? Let's see. Yes, okay. mine opens up as a PDF. <clears throat> so basically, and, and this was done by Synapse Energy. It's a big company that does. You know, it's it's the and, and the weird thing was I, I I was hoping to find a more recent number, but this is clear back a study done in July 2008 okay. by Synapse Energy Economics Inc. So it's a little out of date but it's not it's too out of date. date. Okay. Right. And so it has an introduction. I'm going to look back at construction and and basically let me tell you this is only the construction costs. Oh, okay. So this is only construction costs. This is not yeah. maintenance costs. It's oh, not no, no. fuel just, costs. It's not just, it's not yeah. uh, it's not the 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 uh the trains and trucks to bring the fuel. Yeah, and they're it's talking not, about Duke okay. Energy and all these places. I'm looking at, uh, okay, I'm scrolling down. I, I see a couple things. Now, in the very first paragraph, oh, the, now the specific was, in 2008, I'm looking down below the estimated cost of a 960 megawatt plant. Okay, which is essentially... Yeah, the same size. The, the same size. This is a coal-fired plant. Okay. Now, this is in 2008, was $3 billion. $3 billion. Now, that's 2008. Because that now further up here they kind of they imply that that's very close. No, 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 no. That's the cost of the plant. That's, that's not the cost of the fuel. That's just a construction. Okay, and then they they point out here, two bill. Yeah, this is about right. Two billion for a six hundred megawatt coal plant. So, okay. so we're so the idea of the 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 nine the, uh, you know the uh, the nine fifty that unit that's simple comparable to the uh, the nuclear right. things in mm -hmm. in, in yep. uh, Ukraine. Okay, so that's a big number, isn't it? Well, so. It, if you've got six of these, all right, well, if just, you just had a coal plant that did the same amount of power as this. Well, let's just stick with just the coal plant because I'm, I'm just thinking yeah. about West Virginia. All right. Well, if, if, I, if I need to have 960 megawatts, how many? That seems kind of easy because we just need a, for mm. every megawatt, it's 2.5 million, 2.5 right? million. So 2.5 million times 960. 960. 960 is 2.4 billion oh so i can save i can save like 600 million you can save 600 million and that's just and, and, you're done. <laughs> and you don't need to buy fuel oh okay and also and you don't need to maintain it and you don't need a crew of people to run it oh so you're trying to kill jobs i, I am not trying to, to kill jobs i'm no. just saying that yeah. that you can train these people for some other job is what well, i'm saying yeah. They could be banjo players. They oh could my! Be anything. No, 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 no. Okay, so <laughs> now the last thing I'm going to ask you, since you were thinking about how much space does this take up? Right. So you're talking about 96 of these units, 10 by 10. Eh, that's not that bad. No. So none. Oh, so yeah. If, th if this whole thing was like an acre, right? We're down to like about what a. Uh, so so you've got a 960 an acre, right? times 100. Uh, I fit on a quarter acre lot. <laughs> no, uh, well, 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 for 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 for, for, for this for just one, yeah, yeah. Because you were saying here this was an acre and a half, about. Yeah. 
Yeah. yeah so six of those. Yeah. So that yeah. means yeah. if we're talking about, it would fit on the quarter acre lot, you know, that you see for sale, like down the street here, right? That's really interesting. Oh, geez. All right, so that's the coal funding, right? Yeah. Now, since we since we are in this uh, world where we're talking about, I'm I'm going to say, I know a bunch of people that say we need to move to clean energy by having a lot of nuclear power plants, right? We sure do. And so, and I'm, gonna... I'm saying that because I do not believe it. As a nuclear engineer, oh yeah, yeah, n n a nuclear power is the worst. Well, worst thing you could possibly well, we, imagine. We've obviously seen good yes. reasons for that in the, today's it's, news. It's right? just hideous. So let's click on the nuke chart. Nuke this chart. is this nuke, is the chart the for this chart. week. Uh, oh, my, for, for some reason mine is opening up different. It's not opening. I have to ask it to open. All right, when you open yours, I think you'll see the numbers. Okay. All right. Okay. Uh, so I'm going to ask you. Wait a minute, to, I'm going back to the. Oh, oh, uh, it's the same Same company. This, oh, oh, yeah, okay, these guys I, are the world yeah, leaders. Yeah, because I was thinking, oops, I did something wrong. <clears throat> okay, so now I want you to, I think that by scrolling down, if my, if I remember correctly, they're talking about units that are, uh, scroll down, there's something about Florida, I think. And I know a lot of people are just happy to hear about uh, uh, two 11,000 megawatts. Oh, there it is. There's the number I wanted. Okay. This is based... Uh, they're projecting the cost 17.8 billion for 2200 megawatts. Okay. Is that right? Wow, 2200 megawatts. <laughs> so so 2200 megawatts and each megawatt if it's an ECAT is 2.5, right? Yeah. So that gives 5.5 billion. Oh, see so you mean it's like one third the cost? And again, you don't have to buy the Good coal. Good morning. I love you visiting our science. Store. Yeah. Wow. So, again, and you don't. So you don't have to dig up the coal. You don't have to transport the coal. You don't and have you to, don't have to buy the coal. You don't have to mine Africa or something. And the uh, and the coal and the coal barons can actually get a real job. No. Wow! No, listen, what, your what wife, your an wife said for you not to get political. I know. I'm sorry. You're I'm just sorry. trying to now. You're trying to create jobs. That's what you're I, saying. Yes, you're I am trying to create jobs. That the the coal barons need to get real jobs. Is what, what well, but what, the thing what, is, what, they, what I'm because just look at the money be, they could be, save. Be, because they're currently li living off the, the 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 sweat, blood, and tears of their drones, and that just. <laughs> Well, me well, no but let, me, let me put this in. I'm going to make this in a nicer. A, okay. I'm going to clarify this Thank as a you. nicer proposition. Right? Gotcha. Okay. I feel sorry. Now, I'm just going to also say that I did hear Jim Justice say that he kind of felt good about the fact that that the market for our coals had gone up because of this, you know, world situation. You know, he's kind of saying we could supply the coal for Europe and all that. I'm thinking, okay, that was kind of a weird... I don't think we have that much coal. Well, but, it was just okay. that kind of a weird thing. But my thought yeah, was, weird. here I'm saying Jim Justice, a family of coal miners for mm -hmm. a long time yep. who have provided jobs, provided money, sure. you know, on and on and on and on. I'm saying that if, in the case of, say, a coal-fired power plant, or say some of these people who want to provide electricity to the people of the world, and so that they can listen to their, you know, their TV on, on, and on. Sure. I'm trying to make it so instead of them going down and spending 17 billion dollars, they only have 17, to spend five, eight, What was it? 17.8. 17 I hope you don't mind if I round it up to 18. No, 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 no. They only have to spend 5.5, and that's good for 11 years. There's no smoke. We could save them There's, a lot of money, and they could do better things. The the I just want to say that the health of the people around them would go up. There wow. There. So there's a lot to think about, and Robert and I will point out to you that even though we so, seem to be so big fans what, of this, so what is not, the so so what is the lifetime of a coal-fired power plant? Uh, geez, I don't know. I know they it, first of all it takes forever to license one, and then right. they, it has to be continually maintained, sure. and then it has to be you know it has to be fueled and on and on. Right. I really don't know. And yeah. again, you don't have to have this in a centralized place. You can spread these around. You know what? You could even leave it on the truck that they delivered it on. I How's know. that? 
Yeah. In case you were afraid somebody was going to like launch something at it, you could move it. <laughs> you could move it. You could just like move it. You know, you know what you could do in our area. You could just you could just put them all in Wheeling Tunnel and then create a better way to get around Wheeling. Oh, what what a great idea! There's an idea. Okay, so I, I got to say the other another thing, billion dollar idea. Well, one of the things I have heard all this week that I, first of all, it's an astonishing thing that that for whatever reasons that we're not doing particular things to protect uh, the people of Ukraine, including some of my relatives, and we won't get into that too deep. The, the idea that, with, that we are watching, uh, documented day by day, the use of things that have basically been de declared as weapons that you cannot use short of being a war criminal. Well, And that, when I think of a short, I know, I'm thinking of up. a short guy who I think is a war criminal is what I'm saying. But people kept talking about, Robert, I, I heard somebody come out and say, they're using a vacuum bomb. And, yeah. and I thought, well, my first thought was that really sucks. But that wasn't, <laughs> I had not quite heard the terminology of a vacuum bomb. Yeah, they're, they are bad. They did. Then they also talked about one of the things that is commonly known about are the so-called thermobaric. Now, if I give you those two words, thermo, you know, we're talking about heat. Yes. And if I say barrack, we're talking about air pressure. Air pressure. So. Yes. Uh, I, what I basically just did a link to, uh, I mean, this is one of those things that you think it's just unconscionable that, first of all, oh. anybody would ever deploy these weapons. And it's right. not to say that we people haven't developed them. I mean, obviously, the first picture on this page is, is, is a U.S. Navy. So, so it says a thermobaric weapon, aerosol bomb, fuel air Ox explosive, an FAE, is a type of explosive that uses oxygen from the surrounding air to generate a high temperature explosion. The fuel air explosive is one of the best known types of thermobaric weapons. Yeah, and this is what we're kind of looking, I'm, and I'm gonna say that there obviously has been, our, I've already seen video footage of what to me seems clearly a thermobaric weapon. Now, people go, well, could you just explain what you mean by that? Well, a thermobaric weapon, like they, they say at the top, you know, back in the old days, Robert, if you were gonna like, uh, you know, you, you filled a coconut with some, you know, you're on an island and the pirates are coming after you in that famous Disney movie and you knew that you had some sulfur and then you had some carbon from your campfire. You could mix up gunpowder. And if you had some saltpeter from the, uh, the, the, the cave full of bats and stuff like yep. that. The point is most of them contain all of the stuff they need, like their oxidizer and the fuel, right? And it says typically they're 25% fuel, 70% oxidizer. Right. So... That's kind of the old style of weaponry stuff that, that you know, you had. Uh, the thing about this is why take your own oxidizer if there's an oxidizer available? So right. what they do so is you, they take... You use the air. So what they do is they, it, it, it could be different types of fuels, but say the idea would be if you had a big thing of diesel, a big canister of diesel fuel, right. and you drop it and then you have one detonator that blows the diesel fuel out into just a huge vapor of droplets and vapor, and covers a huge area, and then you have a secondary ignition to then it light it once it's now been incorporated and surrounded by molecules of oxygen, right? Right. So it's a terrible thing. So that's that's kind of what you're looking at. Isn't it really? It's amazing to me the history of this. Uh, in fact, it's really interesting that uh, the first time that they used one of these was World War II, the Luftwaffe and the Wehrmacht. I like to say they're you know I just like I, I watch Hogan's Heroes, so I like to. You know, these words, are they just roll off your tongue. <laughs> but sure but it's astonishing. An Austrian physicist named Mario Zippermeyer, oh, Zippermeyer came up with the whole concept. And, of course, I mean, the, the concept is very simple. You, you and I have talked about uh, in the Midwest when there would be a, an explosion because we're into nanotechnology. Yep. We've often said that uh, that the amount of surface area presented to a potential reaction is yep. really a big deal. So, like in the Midwest, where they used to have a giant grain elevator that right. had been completely or pretty completely they thought emptied out of all the grain, it, it would there would be a huge explosion when somebody would light up a cigarette because all of the tiny tiny particles, particles of combustible of grain, grain or, yes. or you know stuff like that would be floating, and they would. And, and the, the point is, I, you were pointing out one time when, when you were doing a science demo where you would take steel wool and it, you could light it on fire. Yeah. It's because if, if in fact, each unit, in the case of, say, like a thermobaric bomb, you would have tiny droplets, would be completely surrounded by available oxygen. Yeah. And so this is, I mean, first of all, it's a terrible idea. It's, it's a horrible idea. It's great for, like, uh, improving the mileage, in, you know, like the ignition in your, in your uh, internal combustion engine. 
but it's a horrible thing to do, and it should be a war crime. And yeah. recognized as such. I I completely agree with you. Hey, speaking of which, um, I would like to toss out the idea of what I'm calling the Ukraine pledge. The Ukraine pledge. Um, I I am planning. My wife and I, when all of the the uh, the things going on in Ukraine have settled down, my wife and I are going to go to spend our tourist dollars in Ukraine. I don't care if I have to spend spend nights in a leaky tent and eat food out of a tin can. I'm Sounds going like to Ukraine song. and I'm no, going yeah, to spend right. my tourist dollars helping you get back on your feet. And I challenge and everyone else out there to do the same thing. Well, and the other thing I would say uh, in recognition of that concept, there are ways that you can help even before that. So you yep. look around yep, for them because they need help immediately. And yep. some, of, some of it is just merely monetary aid.